We now know the identity of Canada's worst handyman. It's a guy named Terry Chris, and he's from Sault Ste. Marie. In just two short weeks at our rehab center, Terry turned over $3,000 worth of building materials into this heap of rubble. On this bonus episode of the country's most dangerous do-it-yourself show, we'll look back at the work done by all of our nominees. That way, we'll learn the right way yeah. and the wrong way to build an ecological shed designed for our northern climate. Look at it. Will we ever learn the wrong way? This is Canada's worst handyman. Handiwork is more than a large part of the Canadian identity. The house is not less level. It's a large part of our national economy. $45 billion a year gets pumped into Canada renovations and home additions Jesus. that reconstruction also means about about three million tons of old and often toxic building material goes into our garbage that's a lot of waste in fact demolition waste accounts for a whopping 11 percent of everything that goes into our national landfills i don't care as we look back on the sheds built by the nominees, we'll also look at some of the cutting-edge, earth-friendly materials they used. A pile of reclaimed bricks. Clay plaster wall treatment. Housing insulation made from recycled old blue jeans. We'll examine the advantages of these materials. This is some weird eco-product that okay. is the future of paint. And we'll break down the price differences. One of those lights? 90 bucks. Oh. Energy efficiency comes at a price. Incidentally, building one of our eco sheds costs about $2,800. And that's just for the structure. If they were worth how much, I wouldn't have taken them out. You wouldn't have taken them out. Building the same shed out of traditional, more harmful products would have cost less than half that much. Take wood, for example. To frame a shed with quote unquote normal wood would set you back about two hundred dollars using eco-friendly studs and rafters cost us 417 bucks a shed more on that later to find canada's worst handy folks we conducted a nationwide search asking you for nominations i think it needs to be hotter maybe i should use it through emails, phone calls, and videotapes. I don't know what I'm doing. We met hundreds of bad handymen. I'm not totally that bad. We met people with injuries. We met people with unfinished projects. We met people who didn't own pro proper tools. This is the shredded knife. We'll cut that. <laughs> One guy we met was so bad, his waist was blocking his work. This used to be an entrance to the bathroom. In the end, these five atrocious builders were singled out as the absolute worst of the worst. Right from day one. Where's the roof? We had a strong feeling that Terry might end up as Canada's worst handyman. <laughs> this is awesome. Because he built his eco shed larger than the door it had to leave through. It's too tall? Yeah, it's too tall. It's too wide? It's too wide. It's too long. It's too long. Three for three. Mm -hmm. To get it out, Terry chose to de destroy his shed. Then, in a last-ditch effort to save face... One, two... Push! Terry pushed the pieces of his shed back together. Close enough for the girls I date, man. Then he... Screwed it together. Then... I gotta duct tape it. You gotta go. I'm gone. You make that thing good. Terry and his...
His wife put duct tape on every joint. Yeah, I didn't realize how versatile duct tape was. By doing this, Terry thought, you know, perhaps, just, just maybe, Ruth <laughs> would wind up with the title. <laughs> Hold on. It didn't work out that way. You, my friend, are Canada's can worst handyman. Not Ruth. I'm going to take this home and He's put it on my, on my work up. truck. The five eco sheds made by Canada's worst handyman were all auctioned off, sight unseen, on eBay before this TV series even began. To the lucky person that gets the butt hut, you're getting a dream shed. In total, we raised over $10,000 for Habitat for Humanity Canada. Now that the sheds are finished, they're being wrapped for the road. My shed is an awesome shed, and it says the man hut on top. Professional movers will be dropping off five of the sheds. It, it won't go through. Not without taking the roof off. But the buyers of the worst creation will get a chance to say thanks to their builder in person. Terry will be delivering his own shed. Are you nervous about delivering yeah. them? A little nervous. I gotta drive down the highway with this on the truck. Absolutely you do. There. <laughs> that looks good. Let's take it to the man man that bought it. You're not really afraid of this guy. Oh yeah, a little bit. Think he's gonna take a shot at you? <laughs> well, I hope not. His bitch might, but wouldn't you? We've got an hour-long drive ahead of us. There's lots of time to reminisce. Jeff, you know, he's a computer whiz. I thought I had him beat them. This is the hole in the wall that I fixed by using masking tape and a old CD. One of the nominees for Canada's worst handyman knew absolutely nothing about building when he arrived at our rehab center. Jeff. Ready, go! Hard, 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 Jeff became worried about his own knowledge level when he, he couldn't identify the toy tools owned by his children. What's this? Jeff also can't change a 9-volt battery. Someday he will not need to call me about changing the batteries on his smoke detectors. That's Fred. He's the guy who told us about Jeff in the first place. What? You're forcing the... Blade. When we went to tell Jeff he had to come to rehab, he made us a scale model of his dream eco shed. Oh, beautiful. This is beautiful. It's what architects call a box. What distance do you want between your wall studs? When Jeff arrived at the rehab center, his frame was waiting for him. I see a fine piece of craftsmanship. It's not sturdy. Where I live, this shed won't last in the windstorm, I'll tell you. And it had a flat roof. That shed would never be able to take any weight on the roof. I'm sure it would just fall right over. So, Jeff decided to... So I'm figuring maybe another stud. We're also going to raise the roof a little bit. Jeff had us raise it to 9 foot 6 inches. That's 4 inches higher than our height restriction. Your shed's overall height must not exceed 9 feet 2 inches. It's not a cheese grater. When we asked the nominees to name some of the tools they'd be using to build their sheds... Um... <laughs> wood saw? Jeff was the worst. Not sure. Never seen it before. Nope. But that didn't quash his cockiness. I said I... My shed was going to be the showpiece. I'm going to be sitting on Discovery's lawn. Um, I still envision that my shed will be there. <clears throat> the first building challenge was putting together a prefab workbench made from waste framing material and these incredibly strong countertops made from multiple strips of the fastest growing plant on the planet. Bamboo. 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 Bamboo has a higher weight-to-strength ratio than graphite. 
And because new plants shoot from old roots, soil erosion never occurs when bamboo is harvested. While putting together his workbench, we have an issue. We got our our first glimpse of Jeff's ego. You want a children's size? This will do the job. I'm gonna stick with this one for now. I'm gonna leave you junior as well, just because I think you'd benefit from it. Even with two drills at his disposal, Jeff used these inappropriate weapons to punch holes in his workbench. And I misunderstood the instructions, whereas slap so that. Set, that set me back. Following instructions was Jeff's biggest problem. Oh, Jeff, buddy, you got issues, man. Yeah. You've made the opening as wide as the entire outside of the window. Can we get another two by four? When Jeff wired his shed... I know why it's wrong. I didn't know how to fix it. He got more... More wires crossed. To rehabilitate Jeff, it was apparent that we needed to make him understand the importance of following directions. This comes down to reading directions. Yeah, I didn't read that. Yeah. After the break, we'll deliver Jeff's shed. It's tall and it's flat. Oh, no. <laughs> Canada's worst handyman is Terry Cress. I didn't think I'd be the worst. I thought I was doing a pretty good job. Terry and I are headed to Caledon, Ontario. Oh, yeah, I'm nervous. So we can personally deliver his eco shed to the family who bought it. Don't give me Terry's. Just something with four walls and a roof that works. All the wood we used in this series has been stamped by the Green Thinking Forest Stewardship Council of Canada. That means it either comes from one of the 500 million trees that are hand planted every year in this country, or the lumber is manufactured from recycled scrap, like these finger join studs, which create 600 board feet of lumber from every one ton of mill waste. Waste, waste, yep. waste, waste, waste. Plywood can't be made with waste. So, eco plywood comes from sustainable forestry practices, which makes it so expensive, you'd swear it didn't grow on trees. To cover a shed with standard plywood costs 480 bucks. Covering one with FSC plywood cost over a grand. When Jeff covered his shed in plywood... I won't make that mistake again. His helper was Ruth's daughter, Michelle. I don't think he likes women. It didn't go well. Okay, can you lift it up a little bit more? Jeff insisted that Michelle's job would be going underneath the ladder. Can you lift it up a little bit more? Okay, sure. To boost bit more. his plywood. Make sure it's even on the side. When Jeff was named the worst handyman here two episodes in a row, he still didn't get it. I don't know why they're picking on me. Maybe it's because I'm smarter than the rest of them and I should know better. I, I don't know. Jeff was certain he was the smartest person in rehab. What I have on the other candidates is my ability to learn. During his normal 9 to 5 life, Jeff creates huge computer systems. I do a lot of project management, a lot of leading groups and teams in my everyday work. I bet you're perfect at work, aren't you? Yeah. He's a perfectionist. He wants it done right. As leader of the Brick Barbecue Challenge... No, but you gotta leave a space. No, I don't, I don't think there's a space. No, there's no space. No. No, there's no space. Jeff ignored the instructions again. There's instructions on the bag. That's not straight. I'm not a dictatorial type of leader, although by staff may differ. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> 
Jeff's refusal to follow instructions continued through the denim installation. So you read the directions and everything? Nope. You're cutting it with the proper tool? No. Well, what am I doing wrong? At home, Jeff has a nice tile job done in his shower. Tiles by Fred. At the rehab center, Jeff did his own tile. I did read the instructions. The instructions say one sack of mortar covers 40 square feet. We asked you to tile eight square feet and use the entire bag. What's wrong? One of the tiles came out. Hopefully the grout will hold it in. For grouting, I read the instructions to Jeff. It says application. Force grout into joints. Remove as much excess as possible from the surface of the tiles. Allow approximately 15 minutes to set up and become firm. 15 minutes after Jeff left, evaporation showed us that he didn't do an adequate polish. Stir that, man. Stir that up. Because he wouldn't follow instructions, Jeff's walls are a mess. If I'm missing spots... I'd rather you didn't miss spots. Jeff's ceiling is barely attached. This is not a ceiling. I don't know what that is. And Jeff has gaps in his floor. I right. give myself a six on this. When it came time to push Jeff's shed out, he wasn't sure if it would fit. I'd like to try it. Just to see. Keep going slow. Keep. <laughs> it didn't fit. So he took off some flashing and tried again. Ready, go. It didn't fit. So he took off some more flashing and tried again. Go. It didn't fit. So he took off all the steel. And try it again. Ready, go. Hard, 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 Go, go. It didn't fit. So he forced it through. Yes. The most important thing I learned during my stay here was to read the instructions. For understanding the importance of instructions, Jeff, rehabilitated the families that bought the sheds made by our bad handy men have no idea whose shed will be delivered to them well, I want it to be Candace this is for sure do you think it'll be the good one Ollie it's gonna be the bad one <laughs> <laughs> our pro movers are delivering Jeff's shed to the voucher family it's flat on the roof like Jeff made his right Okay, let's All see. Right. Oh no! Who says this? Any guesses? Uh, yes. Well, happy uh -huh. Father's Day. Thank you. <laughs> All, right. All right, so that means then Father has to fix this up. The second worst handyman in Canada? is Ruth Summersides. During her stay here at rehab, Ruth only managed to finish one job in the time allowed. Where's my drill? She was constantly looking for her tools. Wah, 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 nah. She was the most injured person we had. I just hit myself in the face with a hammer. Damn. Ow. 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 And in the end, Ruth's shed was cut in half, then reduced to splinters. But let's start with Ruth back when we met her in Saskatchewan. This is the deck that Ruth built. I'm Ruth's neighbor. Look at the thing there. The darn thing is slammed. Yeah, you bet she is the worst handy person I've ever seen. <laughs> Ruth's daughter, Michelle, is worried because her mother's handiwork is fundamental unsafe. She doesn't understand the words, um, I can't do that. When she made the birdhouse 
version of her eco shed. Goggles. I got goggles. Ruth sawed the lumber with her hammer. Oh, that's another bit off. Although this is not an exact replica of my plan, it's very close. When she entered rehab... Oh, my... I'll get out of the way. You know what? A good wind. Ruth got off to a crushing start. Ah! My birdhouse! <laughs> Talk about a bad omen. I'm just worried that this is foreshadowing because this is supposed to be an exact <laughs> replica of your shed. <laughs> the shed Ruth designed was the height of absurdity. Make these walls eight feet ten. Uh huh. Add on the two foot peak, and Ruth's castle was almost eleven feet tall, more than twice the height of its builder. I love my shed. Shed. It's my shed. I love it. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, I need a higher ladder. When wiring her eco shed, Ruth couldn't safely reach her overly tall ceiling. Think, think, think. So. She wired her lights into the wall. I can't see. My glasses are foggy enough. At a blinding eye level. Did you put your ground on? No, I'm trying to pull at this. See, get that work. Oh, well. She said to me, I'm determined that I will not be Canada's worst handyman. And I said, oh, I definitely not, Mom. You won't be. After the break, um, we'll be delivering uh, Ruth's shed. Oh. oh no! Canada's worst handyman, Terry Cress, spent two weeks building an eco shed. The shed's too big. Yeah, I know the shed's too big. That was too tall to get out of the workshop he was building it in. Now, he's delivering what's left of it to the family who gambled on buying it. When you first met Ruth, you must have just been thinking, well, I got this one beat. I thought I had it beat. He's certainly safer than Ruth. Whoa, watch yourself. I don't think you can hammer in a screw. To get her window frame down to size, Ruth used one, two, three, four pieces of two by four all the way around. And the opening was still too large. Gee, Michelle. Get to it. The insulation we're using is made from recycled denim blue jeans. Is it itchy? This stuff won't be. This stuff isn't itchy because it's 100% cotton. <coughs> What's all this dust coming out? It's just dust. This biodegradable product contains none of the airborne glass fibers or formaldehyde used in the standard pink insulation. <coughs> but it still might leave you breathless. Blanketing a shed with fiberglass insulation costs only 176 bucks. Doing the same job with denim costs 730. I'm gonna have to take a few minutes to... The upper half of Ruth's denim insulation job was out of her reach. We're a team, we're gonna help you finish, okay? Thank you. In drywall. You are definitely Canada's worst handyman. The challenge was still out of her reach. I cannot reach. I screwed up. This has got to come off. You got to do it right. A lot of people do drywall wrong, and that's having an impact on the world. Drywall, the number one building supply in landfills today. Bricks and everything like that now all get recycled. This is the worst bad boy for for landfills. Regular drywall releases the toxic, rotten egg stink of hydrogen sulfide as it breaks down. I don't know if you'd do it this way. 
our Canadian-made Eco drywall contains no sulfides and it's made of 96% recycled material. And there's even better news than that. Chemically infused drywall would have cost 132 bucks. Our harmless product is the exact same price. You know how much I hate drywall? All right, now what do you do? When you're done with Pro Rock drywall, the pure gypsum inside can be used as a soil additive for wheat farmers. That sounds like a Jim Dandy idea. In our second show, Ruth was named the worst handyman here. Then in almost every subsequent show, she was on the expert shortlist. Ruth's the worst. Ruth. Gotta go with Ruth. The worst shed right now, I think, is Ruth's. Ruth. At least improved this week is probably me. So. I don't know what it is. I just can't measure. Tiling the wall was at Ruth's height level, but not her skill level. You didn't put it on right. Put it on. Oh, come. Look. You know what that's that? What is? That's that. Well, I that said take it up and put I like to finish a job that I've started. When Ruth unveiled her end result, I pulled the tile off. She once again acted impulsively and caused damage. Ah, oh, bloody plastic still on there. Oops. Oh, Jesus. Just scratched the tile. Ruth's trim went on wrong. That's on inside out. Her stereo's not wired. What's that? And it's on a shelf that's unsafe. It was lopsided, and it was wobbly, and it had a gap in the back, and I had the board on upside down at the back, so there wasn't much right with it. When it came time to take her shed out, Ruth ran into real trouble. Will yours go? No, no, yours my, go. no way. Ruth built her her shed taller than the door it had to leave through. Cut here. To get her shed out, Ruth decided to cut it in half lengthways. Wedges got the top half lifted high enough to thread poles into the gap. Well, I decided to try rollers because the pyramids were built on rollers. Go! had three million slaves and I didn't. The top half of Ruth's shed was rolled. Stop! You're back online. Well, it was actually Whoa. forced off the bottom of her shed. Stop! Hey! That has to come down from there. How is that going to happen? I don't know. She is so cockeyed in her in her her thinking she doesn't plan things out uh, it's like she's from another planet or something i can see that it can't possibly work ruth's best salvage idea was this one two pull to get ruth's walls out first one two swing her roof had to move. Stop! Stop! This is the reason why I don't want to work with her. This is the reason why I hate going to her house and helping her with anything. One, th two, three. Her roof was folded like an old blanket. And that's Ruth's roof. Oh my God. And put inside the shed for safekeeping. Well, it's still standing. In the end. Ruth thought she was the worst handyman. If you are Canada's worst handyman, please step forward. <laughs> she is Canada's worst handyman. In fact, Ruth is only Canada's second worst handyman. Despite our best efforts, Ruth's not rehabilitated. The Noble family in Newcastle, Ontario, paid $1,725 for Ruth's shed. We don't really know what we're getting, 
So it's kind of a mystery. Do they get everything in them? Like the TV and everything else? Yes. The buyer of the eco sheds received the solar panel, the electrical nerve center, the TV, the composting toilet, the stereo, and of course, the shed itself. Oh, it's got no roof. It's got no roof. Mr. Noble knows what that means. We we got roots. You think so? We got roots. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, what a mess! Roof's on the floor. That's scary. <laughs> but not too scary. In total, all the bits and pieces of the shed are, are worth more than $10,000. The Noble's got a good deal. Are there instructions for all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Terry is personally delivering his eco shed. Thank God we're in farm country because there's a lot of field to run. Planning your getaway? <laughs> yeah. Here's your shed. Go. <laughs> I've been planning it since I left. Jaime Garcia. He will forever be remembered. As the handyman this season who had the um oh how to put it the uh the op opinionated mother-in-law but it wasn't sheila who designed Jaime's shed too tall to get out of our workspace oh no he did that all by himself keep going and stop 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 Jaime's original frame was taller than our height restriction. Pretty darn tall, boy. <laughs> you knew that you were breaking this rule? Yeah, kind of. Jaime's biggest challenge at our rehab center... Door's not done yet! ...started before he even came here. I said, we're not going to fight Jaime as long as you listen to me. If you don't listen to me... All war is going to break out. Jaime tried listening to Sheila, but all he heard was derisive laughter. <laughs> the laugh of ridicule, that's what it is. He always thinks I'm laughing at his work, and I'm really not. I'm laughing because it's really funny. When Jaime made his workbench... You don't listen. Better listen. Sheila wasn't helping. Come on! So I helped him. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> right on. I like that. The next day. What the heck are you doing? I have to untwist this one. Oh. Sparks flew. Any tools you need now, you have to jump down and get them. I'm done. Done. Okay. I quit. I'm out. All the other uh, contestants, they were. They were getting some help, and I, I didn't think I was getting any help. I refuse to help somebody who doesn't want to listen. As long, as long as Jaime is part of Sheila's family, this is the way it's going to be. I don't know what you're doing. I haven't done a lot of installing windows, but I've never seen anybody take down two-by-fours to put in a window. To get rehabilitated, Jaime needed to learn how to tolerate Sheila. Well, if you put it there, you won't lose it. That meant learning patience and focus. You're not going to rip the whole wall down. Okay. Sheila's constant pestering got Jaime distracted. Holy. And it got Sheila exactly what she wanted. <laughs> home he tried to fix a window and um, <laughs> it's now covered with a piece of ply I would when you're in situations like that I think that uh, you need positive reinforcement if I punch it I bet you I find the stud but if I screw through it the stud will be gone drywall with Jaime. <laughs> and Jaime didn't want to drywall with Sheila. Not just her, you You're just stupid people in general. What? But they worked through it. You called me stupid? Uh, 
These lustrous glass tiles cost $25 a square foot, but they are 100% recycled, which means 75% less energy was used to make them versus making glass tiles from scratch. It's, it's, it's when Jaime grouted his tiles, Sheila wasn't there, so no one forced him to read the instruction. You're supposed to mix it together and then apply it. Yeah. It also says to remove the excess with a wet sponge. Can't I sand it? Sand it? After the break, we'll deliver Jaime Garcia's shed. To the person who buys my shed, my shed is like wicked, almost built to perfection. If you pre-bought one of the sheds built by Canada's worst handyman, you might want to leave your house right about now, because the sheds are on their way. For the first week of rehab, <laughs> stop your laughing. Sheila laughed at everyone's mistakes. I can laugh forever. It doesn't bother me none. Mostly, though, she laughed at Jaime. I know she's having fun as she is, you know, but it's, it's no fun for me. Installing a waterless urinal didn't make the harmony flow either. Well, I don't want my mother-in-law helping me with this. The average Canadian flushes away over 100 litres of perfectly good drinking water every day. Nationally, that's over 3 billion litres of water. These waterless urinals use no H2O at all. They've already become popular in Canadian ski resorts because of their simplicity and low maintenance costs. Come on! You mother. You. You get the sense Jaime wishes he was talking to Sheila? She went as far as sabotaging the projects. Jaime, enjoy this. It's fun. It can be lots of fun. Stop doing it! Huh? I said when I finish that pan. Don't do anything if you're not gonna do what it's supposed Everybody else else is have fun. Yeah. And I can't have fun because he's too serious. And I hope he takes a lot of it as my insults as he calls them as a joke. Have you been waiting on boards? No, he hasn't been waiting on boards. And if he doesn't behave, this will break over his head. They're not really insults. That's just me. All I'm here for is to clean up after you. Off. Renovations cause so many relationships to hit rock bottom. Don't call me an a-hole. Some do-it-yourself stores now have a couple psychologists on staff. Oh, no! Let me do it. Let me do it. Trying to create a bond, we named Sheila and Jaime as co-foreman of the roofing challenge. You have so much to do. Five sheds, they all need roofs. We're gonna try to get everybody's roofs done first, okay? Instead of working together, though. Uh, you're the foreman that, that was walking around. I was the foreman that was sitting here. Things got out of hand. Screw you, Jaime. What do I have to be the foreman of the foreman? One of the first rules you learn about getting married is you always check to see what the bride's mother is like. That's right. I think Jaime may have screwed up on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Michelle, you have to get up and help. You, you're mistaken, Sheila. I don't have to do I'm the farmer! Get the hell off of your seat! No. And help! <laughs> no, I don't yes! think so. Yes! Get up and help! <laughs> Sheila was like... Right on her. It was, it was kind of scary. Another thing that's kind of scary is the contents of shingles. 
Ordinarily, their core is made of fiberglass. But the so-called organic shingles we're using have a heart of wood. To get his too tall eco shed out, Jaime and Sheila work together. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah, it's coming, going good. good. Cooperating, they raised the roof, lowered it, rolled it, raised it again, and slipped the walls underneath. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! By working with his mother-in-law, Jaime became rehabilitated. I understand my mother-in-law a little bit better than before. Not only did Jaime learn, I learned too. So I think that this whole experience has been pretty beneficial for me and my family. Jaime's experience is also about to benefit the Ituri family. Jaime actually doesn't look that bad. Oh, God. This, this is it. <laughs> I did a good job. It looks promising. I'm just so glad that the mother-in-law was there to direct him to do the right thing. I'm glad she's not coming with the shed. On the road with his own shed, Terry's still worried. Oh, God. Where's the door locks? <laughs> Are you going to be hiding for this? I'll be locking the door until it's safe to come out. I hope he has a good sense of humor. This is a renovating tool. At least it is in the hand of Candace Landmark. This Calgarian mother is so addicted to home improvement shows, she thinks she's a better all-round handyman than her husband, who's a construction worker. I like watching Homes on Homes. Homes, trading spaces, Ty Pennington on Extreme Makeover, designer guys, Meg Ruffman. She thinks because she watches it on TV, she can do it. She watches Dr. Phil and figures she's a, she's a psychiatrist. Candace has no e equipment. This is my toolbox. She doesn't know how to screw. Sometimes if you do it like at a different angle, it's a win. And she can't hammer. In fact, the first time we gave her a nail, for this is gonna be a while. It took over five minutes. So I have to hammer the, the nails in then? Oh no, you can drive it in with your thumb if you want. And 171 strokes of the hammer. Yeah. I have to be more aggressive with the hammer. I think I'm a little scared of it. Candace designed her eco shed with more than twice as much lumber as necessary. My shed is not going anywhere. It's a rock. It's it's dirty. How can you make the studs so close? This actually is pretty good. When Candace learned that studs should be placed with their centers 16 inches apart, she altered her design. Thank you. And lowered her height. Let the saw do the work. On day three, Let the saw do the work. we noticed that Candace was letting her husband do all the work. It's just so confusing. The next day, oh, 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 Justin let Candace try to figure out her own wiring job. Can I get you to hammer it? But after an hour of near weeping, don't sit there and shake your head. What do you want know. me to do? I don't know. Justin took control again. To light up the eco sheds, we used real sunlight and these energy efficient LED bulbs. Oh, hun, you broke it. How did I break it? You broke it. Each one can burn constantly for seven years making them ultimately cheaper than energy-wasting incandescent bulbs. Even when Candace learned how to do something from our experts... When you put a header or a lintel in, it does not go like this. It goes like this. You have a lot more structure, strength, 
she'd let Justin take over. Doesn't look too bad. Wasn't one of the things you went over in class the importance of how strong the header is? And to make it strong, you marry two two-by-fours together on their edge? You're going so fast, you're not quite... In the first week, all of Candace's projects were completed by Justin. He just buds right in. And if I'm doing something wrong, he just does a stupid roll the eyes or... Well, Candace still thinks because she watches TV, she has all the ideas in her head. I do have ideas. Absolutely. Without Justin, Candace had no idea how to comprehend instructions. To tell you how thick it is? Um, do we have the right board or one not? One to one, one and a half. One and... One to one... What? One... Two... I can't read it. So this is the right board? I believe so. Okay. Candace did begin learning that working is... harder than watching TV. I'm just really frustrated. I'm yes, just frustrated. I know, I know. Then we learned this. I'm three months pregnant. So what? Yes. Yeah, baby number two. It is now exciting to tell people I'm pregnant because I'm over well the three month mark today. After the break, we'll deliver Candace's shed. We will. Canada's worst handyman hopes delivering the eco shed he built for the Lang family will go well. Just as long as it has no gun. Perhaps Terry wouldn't have received the embarrassing title if he'd had a pro builder to help him. Well, that's one thing Candace uh, had was Justin. Candace's construction working husband, Justin, was there to make sure her jobs were finished in time. Call Andrew, because I think you're done. Everyone, everyone's like, Justin, you do so well. You're you're so handy, Justin. They're making his ego, like, up to here. And I'm just going to have to knock it right back down when we get home. Painting is new to you, right? Yeah, it is new. This type of green paint is also new. Standard paint contains a chemical cocktail known as VOC. VOCs, like formaldehydes and heavy metals, cause things like skin rashes and smog. The biggest problem with our zero VOC paint is that it costs three times more than the regular stuff. You got so much paint all over the floor. You got paint on the floor. No, you got paint all over the floor. Trimming her window. Thirty-four and a half. Thirty-four and a half. Okay. No question me. Candace took control of nailing up the final piece. Look at Justin. Can you see? Look at this for a sec. You put a different one in in a different spot. No, I'm running out of spots. I think I did improve throughout the show drastically. On her final project, chisel and indentation. Oh, I suck at chiseling. I just wrecked the whole door. I chiseled the door off. Candace finally realized the truth. It is a lot harder than it appears on TV. I really didn't think it would be, but it is. For that, that realization alone, Candace is rehabilitated. Deborah Hill and Dale Roach paid $1,825 for Candace's shed. It is a nice look shed and it's somewhere you can go to you know if you want to get away from people and whatnot I want to keep the logo oh. awesome our first satisfied customer that's the power system for the uh, solar I guess well worth it all right I think they've actually learned something <laughs> Canada's worst handyman, Terry, is 
personally delivering his shed. To the person that bought my shed, I'm very sorry for what I did to it. it I hope you're not disappointed, but I know you will be. We're here. I didn't expect it to be come this soon. Oh, you're not ready? No. <laughs> the man that paid $1,676 is ready to put the shed right here next to the pool. Hopefully the shed we get will be a little better than this one. Mr. Lang also hopes his new shed is better than his neighbor's gazebo. Um, uh, be good luck, eh? <laughs> good luck, sir. <laughs> this is Terry Chris. Oh, no. Terry, not oh. Terry. Terry. He's a lovely fella. He is. Oh. Don't kill me or anything. <laughs> After the break, Terry's worst fears are realized. The family that bought Canada's worst shed are about to get what they paid for. What did you think you're buying? A usable shed. <laughs> well, you didn't get that. Oh, God. Oh, I hear pieces falling. There's no roof. No roof. Right on cue, Harvey arrives with the roof. The, yes! <laughs> the last time Harvey saw Terry's shed was on day seven just before he had to leave with a bad back. Now, he is back. Just as I remember it, there was sarcasm. Harvey, he's a nice guy. Um, he's really sensitive, and uh, he writes poetry. A poem. A shed in torment. These materials never heard of Terry Cress. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. A man convinced his skills are the best. I'm not going to be Canada's roof sandy man. The shed was built with blood, sweat, and tears. Is there something you want to say to me? No. Nope. It will be talked about for so many years. All right. Thank you. Least too short. Well, there's there's no fixing that. What the f going on here? The shed could not stay where it was built. No, it won't fit. It's too big. You have to move it. Here comes the guilt. We're going to have to cut the shed right in half. Slice it. Slice it. The shed was so scared and did not want to die. Terry started to cut. The shed started to cry. Oh, my God. But it was, Har it was part of Harvey's fault. And it's Harvey's fault. This once beautiful shed, now cut in four parts, I think it had died. I have a big broken heart. It's uh, all cut up in rubble. I am angry at myself, but what can you do? I'm proud to be Canada's first handyman. Obviously, Harry is not rehabilitated. Let's he thinks he's like handyman of the year, but I'll explain it to him when we get home. Terry still thinks that he came in first. In all of Canada, we know he's the worst. Goodbye, Terry. And good luck in future projects. I want to build a gazebo.